Good morning, this is Greg Scala from Della Scala Guitars. I build uh, custom arch top uh, acoustic and electric guitars here in my uh, shop in uh, Toronto, Canada. I've had some interest in my carving duplicating machine uh, that I built uh, about a year ago and uh, so I thought I'd uh, make a little video uh, showing some details of the machine and uh, how it works. Here's the uh, machine. Uh, I built it about a year ago uh, from uh, parts that I got from home improvement stores and some things on the internet. And I put it together for about $400. Um, I am able to weld, so that did help me to put the carriage assembly part of it together. Uh, so if you can do that, it uh, would certainly uh, uh, improve your chances of being able to make something like this. The unit itself is constructed of uh, three basic parts. One is the, uh, the bed, and on the bed I have a uh, uh, a place to mount a uh, wooden template for my arch top guitars. This is something that I've carved entirely by hand. And on the other side of the base, I have a uh, uh, place to put a piece of uh, wood uh, that the duplicator replicates. Uh, it takes me about 40 minutes to rough carve the inside and outside of an arch top, uh, top or back. Uh, and it is really just used for roughing. I do take the uh, tops and backs down to final shape by hand with uh, hand planes, spoke shaves, scrapers, that sort of thing. Uh, in addition to the, the, the base, I've got the what I call a carriage assembly. The carriage assembly has uh, three degrees of movement. I can move it up and down. It goes from side to side. And the whole thing does slide back and forth. On the base itself, what I've done is I've mounted these steel rails which meet with these uh, bearings here. I got these from from a place in China on the internet. It cost me about $120 to have that delivered to my shop in uh, Toronto. Um, I went with this sort of a, a mounting uh, where you can see the entire rail is mounted on to two th uh, thick pieces of plywood because I felt that uh, it would provide a bit of structural rigidity to the base and I felt that if I had dismounted a, a shaft uh, a suspended shaft that it might might bow in the middle as the uh, weight of the carriage slid across it. it this works very well. Uh, onto that I uh, mounted a, a shaft support aluminum block. Uh, I first put on a piece of aluminum here and drilled and tapped it and it's all bolted together. And then from one side to the other side I have this long hardened uh, shaft uh, and that provides a uh, uh, device along which the carriage assembly can slide. You can see in the bottom of the carriage assembly here I've simply mounted a couple of bronze uh, pillow block bearings and they allow the unit to rotate on an axis and allow it to slide back and forth. Works very well. The carriage assembly itself is a uh, steel tube. I've welded a little plate in the end just to close it up and give it some rigidity. Onto that I welded a one inch circular tube and at this end a smaller square tube and then I just put this piece on in between to give it some support side to side. Within the steel tube I mounted a, uh, a steel shaft. I drilled a hole through the shaft and then I put on what I call a stylus and the stylus is a piece of quarter inch drill rod which I uh, cut uh, taps, uh, cut threads at the end and mounted a, a ball onto it. This ball is one inch in diameter and is exactly the same size as the router bit that I have at the other end which I'll show you in a minute. I put on this adjustment screw here so that I can move this up and down and I'll show you why I would do that later. Um, I also underneath here welded on a couple of uh, bolts uh, and inside those are some uh, grub screws and this allows me to move this in and out. Um, I haven't moved it in and out since I set it but it allowed me to uh, make the uh, accurate adjustment when I first set up the unit um, and that's held very solid. In addition to that on this part I've mounted this is simply a bicycle brake device and the brake cable comes all the way through and over to this side here and I've mounted it there and it engages the holding device for the shaft. That's so that when I slide this carriage back and forth what I can do is pull the brake handle, it locks the brake on that side and it allows this to move 
straight back and forth. It doesn't wander this way or that way at all and it allows me to make nice straight lines as I go across. On this side I've mounted a uh, Porter cable router and I'll just tilt the machine up here. And you can see inside I've got a uh, one inch uh, router bit that coincides with the diameter of the uh, ball on the end of the stylus. And you can see underneath there I've just put on a piece of plywood with a hole in it. And onto that piece of plywood I've mounted this three inch door sweep and a port here for my dust collection system. I've left all the dust around the machine here to show you that uh, after making um, three and a half tops and backs that's all the dust that has not been sucked up into my dust collection system. Uh, it, it's probably pulling up over 99% of the dust uh, and uh, makes for a nice clean shop environment. You can see that the uh, router is mounted just to a metal plate on the end of that square uh, tubular piece of steel here with a couple of these big U-bolts that I got at Princess Auto. On this end of it, what I've done is put a counterweight. And the reason is, is I didn't want this carriage assembly as it bears down on either the template or the pattern to, to press down into it and distort it. So this counterweight um, effectively balances the weight of the, the carriage assembly on the other side. And you can just see with very light finger pressure, I can raise that up and it drops down. The other thing I did here, because I wanted to make this unit stowable, so if I just take this clamp off, this thing is actually on a hinge. And I can move it over like that, put a little piece of Velcro around this area here. And this whole assembly slides off the rails and I can hang it up on a wall out of the way. Uh, also to make this portable on the base, I mounted these little wheels. And I can drop the base down onto the floor and roll it over to a different part of my shop leaning up against the wall and this thing basically takes up no space in my shop when it's not in use. Obviously when it is in use it does take up a lot of space.